Hello and welcome to another video on Microsoft Fabric. And in today's video, we are going to discuss how can we push a file from a local on-premise location using Python to Microsoft Fabric Lakehouse. So the objective here is that I have a file and I will run a Python code on my on-premise or on my laptop or on my local machine. The code is not there on the fabric or on a cloud. The code is going to be running from a local system. Now to do that, we need an authentication token. And right now in fabric, you don't have the authentication token method available. The authentication token is going to come from Azure and that too for Azure storage or Azure data lake. So we have to understand the process of this token generation. And not only this, we have to also have permissions on Azure portal to give the permission to specific apps to get the token. So I will take you through the entire process more than code the process is really important and there are minor minor things in the code which are really important it took me quite some time and i need to take help from various people which are expert as azure expert in python in sending the file to adls to make sure this code works on fabric so i'll tell you what i wanted to do first of all so let me take you through the my fabric so on my fabric so for fabric, I'll go to app.powerbi.com and from here, I'll go to my workspaces. The workspaces which I plan to use today is 01 fabric. Inside the 01 fabric, I have lake houses and the lake houses which I'm going to use is lake 02. And I'll click on the lake house icon or the lake house link, which will take me to the lake house explorer. And in my lake house explorer, I have files. If you scroll a little bit below, you will see files. And under the files, I have a folder sample. And inside this sample folder, I have this file item.csv, which I have loaded using my local code. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to delete it so that I can push it again. Now there are two parts when we are pushing when one we create the file and second we push the data and we have to understand both the mechanism. So before we understand this code, how we are going to push this data to this file, let's understand the process of getting token. Once we get the token, I'll explain you that you also need to use this URL because this URL is something really important. And more than that, this URL, you can actually go to this folder and you click on these three dots, go to the properties and take this URL with you. This is the URL, which is really important for you. So I'll explain the part of these URLs. It contains the workspace ID. It contains the lake house ID, and that is really important for us. Same thing is also available here on the top. So let's begin our journey for creating the token. To get the token, you have to go to portal.azure.com. Make sure you have a login there. You already created an account there. If not, ask your admin to give the access. Now, once you have done that on portal.azure.com, you have to go for app registrations. If you don't get it, you can search for app registration. Once you click on app registration, you need to start registration of a new app. And in this one, you need to give a name. You can keep it account in any organization directory or and personal. This is what you can keep. And then you register with the default parameters. Rest of the things just keep default. I have already done a app registration, which is fabric.microsoft.com. Now, when I do the app registration, I get few things and please note down these things. I need this application ID. I need this directory and tenant ID. 
then display name is fabric.microsoft.com now not only i need this but i also need certificates and secrets so here you have to go and add a new secret give it a name and add a secret and you would be needing this secret id once you got the secret id just note it down so you already noted uh, the two things there and you have noted now the secret also now you have to go to the app permissions and some of the permissions are really important here which you supposed to give and one of the important permission is azure storage and the other permissions are power bi service and microsoft graph but most important one is azure service user impersonate you might require a service user i'll just tell you how you get it if you click open on that you will if you open this you have a azure storage third in the down and that is what you need so you have to click on this and you will get that added here into your permissions and then you have to come and click on the grant admin consent for your company once you are done with that you are ready to go okay so i have done with all these settings and once i have done this is the token which i can use but to use this token i need to generate a token and for that i need to write down a python code to generate a token so my application with the help of application id directory id and secret has to generate a token and i'm going to tell you that code in the python so let's begin our journey now with python to move a file to lake house microsoft fabric lake house and to do that we will go ahead and generate a token and then we will execute rest of the code to move the file from the local system to the microsoft fabric to get the token let's go to the python and write down the code to get the token now this is the code which i have now to get the token i need to call a process get access token what we are going to pass in this get access token at the end i am calling this so get access token will need the app id or the client id client secret directory id email which is your app.powerbi.com email or your service login and the password of that so get access token will need all these five things so make sure you are able to get all these values and you have to supply those i have written it in text but that will not be text those will be the id i have another code here lying into the another file where i have already written these things now post that you have to write this procedure and before you do that you need to import request json and you might require pandas and os i am not requiring pandas here i just was testing something so where that's why i use pandas here now i need to create a procedure get access token by using app id app client id or application id client secret directory id username and password i am assigning them to variables like app id client secret directory id token url is going to be https login.microsoftonline.com/directory id which we are going to get from there oauth to token then we will need to create a token data json which is grant type equal to password client id equal to application id or app id client secret equal to client secret which we have got from the azure resource equal to storage.azure.com scope is equal to graph.microsoft.com user id and password your email id and password which you have passed to this procedure now token header content type equal to application x form dot u url encoded then if you want to print the token url you can print now token response request dot post token url data token data these are things we already created see this is token url this is token data header is equal to token header which is content type now token dot response dot dict equal to json dot load token response dot text i am converting it into a text json for, uh, format json dot load we are calling and then we are getting this dict and this is what is going to give us a token 
these are few things we have done for error handling but token you are going to get token response dot dict is going to give you token dot get access token which you are going to get the access token refresh token if you need so then token dot response dot dict dot get refresh token so in this manner we will be able to get the couple of things which we have done for the error handling and what kind of error we are getting here and then we are also printing few things here for the testing so in this manner this procedure is going to give you the token this is really important procedure and you might not have to do changes to this procedure when i'm going to provide it into the blog or the description you might be able to just use this code as is by just passing your values make sure you are able to generate those on azure portal or portal.azure.com now this process has two part one we have to put the file and the second we have to patch the file put file is just going to create a file with the empty data and patch file is something which is going to append the data onto it now to run both these things you need this url let me explain this what this url is so this url is basically this is your url which you can get from the fabric i'll tell you from where you, this is you are going to be workspace and then lake house file is my folder sample is my folder and item.csv is something i'm planning to patch right now and then question mark resource equals to file is something which we are going to give when we are going to run the first command when we are going to put the file which is basically put file or basically request dot put so what happens here we create this token url we specify the token headers which is authorization bearer space access token this is really important this is must for the token header i am just printing i can comment this printing of token url then i have a response response dot put this is really important token url header token url and then i'm printing the response to just to check it out now this is going to create a file now from where did i get this url i shown you initially but let's go back to the app dot power bi dot com and there in the lake zero two you have to go to the file sample and this sample folder i've created i'll tell you how do i create it i clicked on file and say new subfolder and that is how i created this please remember i am not able to create a folder from my python the folder has been created here now go to the sample click on this and then go to the properties and copy this url once you copy this url and come back and paste it on your vs code or whatever python studio you have you can check it out so see this is the first part you got this is your workspace this is your so let's look at the parts so the common url the workspace the lake house file for files and the sample subfolder folder and subfolder everything you are getting from there you don't have to do anything you just have to specify a file name now put file is done it's going to put the file but where is the data we have not taken any data for that you need to call the patch file process so i'm going to call token i'm going to call put file and i'm going to call, call the patch file so again the token url is same but there are few things which has changed and i'm just getting this token url and then i'm saying request dot put now this code is already part of this one so if i don't want to execute file in a separate function then i can write down this code so means i can only run with the patch file this is the same code uh, which i am writing down here so i can execute using the single procedure but this is an optional code now the actual code of the patch file starts from here so basically i say token url and in the token url the changes are here so you can see position equals to zero action equals to append and flush equals to true so this action append and flush true i am giving both at the same time this is really important this is the rest of the part is same then you have authorization bearer access token this is in the token header file name i am giving and the content length then printing the url token url this is my local file and you can see i have written r and in the single code i have given the backslash path so that you know it converts it into a string with the taken care of the black backslash then this code is really important with open file rb as file 
file contents file dot read i am reading the file and then re re response request dot patch token url data file content header equal to token headers and print response i am just printing so in this manner i have written a code here which is going to execute and put the file there now time has come that i'll execute the code which is i have already written here with my credentials with my azure ids so why don't i go ahead and run this out and show you what happens in that case okay so let me go to run run without debugging i am using vs code you can use any studio which you prefer for the python code and as you can see the code has completed time to jump on to the power bi service and check it out whether we got something or not so let's cross this let's go to the sample and refresh the folder and see did we get any data so we got this file and we are expecting 55 line and that's what we got it so we got a data from local using python code using token this time there is no pop up those who are watching the sql video we have a pop up no pop up this time without pop up using authentication token we have done it we have pushed a file from the local to here let me run this code for a bigger file so what i have done is i changed this code to put sales.csv now sales.csv is a little bit bigger file it may take little bit more time it is having 30000 rows so again run the code without debugging and this is also completed so let's go ahead and check it out so let's go to the sample and say refresh we got sales.csv this is a 1 mb file and you can see how fast it has loaded this and i have scrolled halfway another halfway and i have 30000 rows the one is header and th this one additional line so you can see how quickly we are able to move the file data from the local machine using python using azure authentication token and remember these things can also be used using another mechanism you can use the curl command you can use various other methods so why don't you go ahead and try now with the authentication token method how would you push your data on to the microsoft fabric and do let me know what else you want me to cover in this particular series thanks for watching this video thank you